Guys, what's up? How's it going? It's John. Welcome to another Game Talk. I'm here with my good friend Jeffrey Wittenhagen. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Hey, John. It's been a while. Definitely it has been a while. talk again. So since we've last talked, we've gone to some some gaming shows. I thought I figured we'd talk about kind of our experiences. You were just as of filming this, recording this. You were last weekend or this past weekend at the Midwest Gaming Classic. How was that? Absolutely, yeah. I was over at um, MGC up in Milwaukee. Um, this is like my fifth or sixth year going. Um, it's been super fun every time. Uh, last year they moved to a new venue and then this year is the second year at this new expanded venue um i think a few years back i saw you there and it was like in a hotel i was there five years ago yeah and it, yeah. Was, it was a hotel it was like an outdoor kind of tent if i recall <laughs> yeah but it's changed it's obviously changed venues though they moved downtown milwaukee correct yeah yeah they're they're now in downtown milwaukee over in an event center connected with skywalks with uh two different hotels okay um, yeah it was, it's it's really crazy and um my favorite part of that one is literally all the people that i've known over the years tend to go there and mm -hmm. like my panel that i did was uh switch collecting and how collecting cartridges now on the switch parallels to collecting on the nes and i had sarumaru uh who you Saru, may know yeah. as uh, one of your artists from uh, awesome <laughs> sydney, dude sydney hunter on the yeah, he, upcoming he's... switch launch <laughs> shout out to him he helped out with all the graphics some of the graphics for the game so big help with that so uh, yeah. awesome yeah super cool dude uh, how'd your panel go and uh so saru is a big Japanese yeah. collector so we got the overseas from him um JP Switch Mania which he's um uh, the de facto collector on the Switch came out and then of course cool. Kyle and I were there um the panel was pretty awesome um really amazing uh went really in depth which was super cool and talked about an upcoming Switch book that I have coming out this summer so that thing is going to be super rad you're and... popping these books out left and right man I'm telling you that's awesome though <laughs> Keep you, keep you busy, man. Keep you busy. I love it. I mean, uh, sleep is for the week, right? So you don't need to yeah, sleep. Yeah. No, my time, my, my, my one time I went to a, a, a Midwest Gaming Classic, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, really well organized from what I remember. Um, really cool vendors from what I recall. I'm sure it's obviously grown like two or three fold since I was there five years ago. Um, yeah, it's it's like one of the premier gaming events to go to in the country, is it not? Like oh, yeah. Portland. It's, it's definitely uh, one of my favorites just like you said portland and too many games and game on which are like my favorite ones to get together it's like the oh, thanks, experience man. of those conventions <laughs> is what yeah. makes it <laughs> i have a unique perspective having done game on for five years right because when i got back from uh midwest gaming class like i kind of really motivated me to want to start game on to be honest with you because i saw how much fun it was and stuff and i've been to portland years and it, portland was a huge influence for me as well but I just have a different perspective because I know how much work, how much time, how much blood, sweat, and tears goes into running these events. It's yeah. almost a full-time job, I'll be honest. And it's a lot of work. It's very rewarding. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm happy to do it. But it's extremely stressful. <laughs> it's extremely stressful. And I know last yeah. year with uh, Midwest Gaming Classic, they had like a blizzard went through. I know they were, they were hurting as far as because their tennis was down. Which my heart breaks. I'm really glad to see they they came back this year full force. That's awesome. Yeah, and uh, this year, of course, you know, being Milwaukee, it couldn't stop snowing. But um, it's it April Sunday afternoon, so everybody was already at the convention. So it didn't that's good. Prevent anybody from showing. Yeah, up. that's good. Yeah, it's it's April. I mean, uh, you know, I'm spoiled here in Arizona. Granted, we we pay for it in the summer here in Arizona. It gets like 110, but. You don't shovel the snow, is what I tell people, right? So yeah. I'd rather have the have the summer, the hot, you know, the dry heat than the the snow. Uh, you know, in, in August when we do game on, it's like monsoon season, so we kind of have an issue potentially with with weather too. We've had a couple of years where it's been like raining and you know, kind of dusty, and, and we get these they call it haboobs. Have you heard these things or these dust storms that come through? They only occur yeah. in two parts of the world. Uh, I think uh, Iraq is one, and and Phoenix is the <laughs> other place. So. We, that certainly could be an issue, so I can certainly relate to the weather. Uh, people don't like to go out when it rains here. People, I'm sure, don't like to go out when it snows heavily in Milwaukee. So, But that's cool, man. So tell me about your experience. Uh, how are the vendors? 
So, um, part of it is vendors, like, I tend to have my books set up, like, with the merch table at that okay. convention, because okay. uh, they don't have, like, a specific, like, bookseller section, um, and I, like, sell out Friday before the convention opens, which is insanity. Like, That's awesome. People are coming with, like, their collector checklists, and it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, and... That's fantastic, Like, too. one thing that I really liked about the experience, though... And it's something that parallels what you've been doing with Game On the last few years mm -hmm. is there were a lot of like known people that would come out and celebrities. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like some of the cooler ones were I met um Howard Phillips from Nintendo. Yeah. Um, cool. I've been chatted, trying to get... chatted with him about um a yeah. bunch of stuff with Nintendo. Um super cool dude. I met him um, years ago at Portland, super down to earth guy. I've been trying to get a hold of him to come out to Game On, but he's a busy guy, so I get it. But uh, yeah, man, that's that's awesome. They had uh, what yeah. the uh, the guy from Ghostbusters, right? Uh, What's his name? Yeah, Ernie Ernie Hudson, who played Ernie Winston Hudson. In Ghostbusters. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say though, by far my favorite mm -hmm. thing. So they did this hosted after party. Okay, and it was at one of the hotels. They had a DJ play, which was Overdrive Reality. It was like a, um, they do like this show where they set up and they have DJs and crazy experience. And um, when you walk through the door, the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase from old school WWF gave you a old dollar school. that got you a free drink. There you go. That's <laughs> cool. And, and then they had tournaments set up and games. Yeah. And yeah. so one of the games they had Brian Colon who uh, was the creator of Rampage and yeah, General yeah. Chaos. Yeah. And he had a shooting gallery. Huh. Yeah, so they had like this little BB gun and you can shoot down some of his characters that he had set up. He has like little figures that he sells. That's awesome. And yeah, he shoot down that. That was super awesome. I, I saw he was there. He was at Game On last year. Super cool dude. Mm -hmm. Daniel yeah. Pacina, I saw was there. My good buddy, Daniel. Um, yeah, so Daniel Pacina and Anthony Marquez, who played... Um, Daniel Pacina played Johnny Cage and Scorpion. Yep. And Anthony Marquez played Kung Lao. Yeah. And Kung Lao started doing Kung Lao karaoke yeah. at the party. Yeah. And he like was doing shirtless Kung Lao karaoke, <laughs> which was you know, ridiculous. He, wanted he was to like perform... doing poses, and he was like he was all into it. And it was like hilarious. He wanted to perform at Game On, kind of a last-minute deal. He's like, hey, can I give me some time to perform? We kind of made time for him, and it just didn't end up panning out, unfortunately. But um, yeah, that's he's uh, good. He's, he's real good. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe next time. But uh, very, very. I mean, we yeah. went to I, I party with him and Daniel, uh, which is pretty cool because you know the kid you don't grow up thinking like you know play Mortal Kombat. I would never envision as a as a, as a grown up adult. I'm partying with those guys now. It's really wild, kind of a trippy experience to kind of as a and kid. The, they are pretty heavy drinkers, especially they, at Game On. <laughs> they, they, they are indeed. So uh, I know Daniel's coming back for sure uh, at Game On this yeah. year, which would be cool. Um, and uh, very cool. Well, awesome, man. Uh, glad you had a good time. So, yeah. so there were still two other things oh, yeah. that Go happened there yeah, tell that me. blew my mind. Please. So, so one was um, the announcer from NBA Jam and NFL Blitz was Tim. there. Tim Kurt Kurtitz? Tim yeah. Kersalau. Kersalau. And... And we were playing basketball, and he was calling shots. That's awesome. Boom, so, like, they had this little, He was going, it's a, he's on fire. <laughs> That's, like, like classic. Like real basketball or actually on the NBA Jam basketball? What were you playing? Um, It was one of those shooters. Oh, play, okay. Like, yeah, at, yeah. The, the hoop a, shoots. Like at a yeah. fair. Hoop yeah. Shot. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it was awesome. Like a, it was just surreal. That is really cool. And, and the thing that's crazier is like the more you get to know these guys because I've known them for like many years, right? So it's it's like different. But the one that was the craziest of them all is they had a WCW versus NWO Revenge N sixty four tournament. They had a battle royal, and yeah. we all played it. And they had a guy who was like the champion uh, playing. And commentary was done by Eric Bischoff from WCW. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it was ridiculous. Like That's cool. Um, I swear my controller wasn't working. And they, they threw me in. Chris Jericho came out. That's who I was playing. I was hitting the punch button and nothing was happening. So either the guy who won was so good that he didn't allow me to get in a shot. Or was right. The controller wasn't working. I'll say the controller wasn't working or I was drinking too much. That's, but... that's hilarious, man. <laughs> 
Cool. <laughs> but yeah, that that stuff right there, that was all part of that little after party. Okay. Um, you know, they had a, they had a pay bar and everything too, which was super cool. cool. That's awesome. And there's a lot of people there. It was that was like part of the after party, but then they had the what they had at Portland last year with the NES collection displayed in a museum. Oh, that's cool. They had one of those there. Yeah. Wada actually brought it. Wada Games, who. Oh, Wada. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, Ken and they Ken have a is, complete collection. Wada Games does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. They even had they even had the complete um, they had stadium events. They had everything there. Wow. Okay. And okay. and then in their display, of course, they had the Super Mario Brothers, the sticker seal that was recently in the news. They had that in there. Oh wow, very cool. Yeah. They had three or four copies of the Nintendo World Championships. Okay. Um, lots of stadium events. Like th- it wow. was ridiculous how much stuff they had. That's pretty awesome. They're out of Denver, if I recall right. I think. Yeah. Yeah. They were at. Um, uh, yeah. They were at uh, Retro City Fest uh, this earlier this year too. I got to meet those yeah, guys. Yes, they were. Yeah. Very cool. And, I mean, I've known these guys for um, almost ten years now. Okay. And. They're like super knowledgeable, like old school Nintendo age members that I've known. Cool. And like they've just seen it all, basically. Like if you want anybody grading your games, it's it's like these this crew right here. Really? That's awesome, like, man. What? And I haven't gotten anything graded by them. Um, I do have like right over here a couple sealed games, okay. and I was like, I should probably bring those with right. me just to support their business. Right. But I haven't gotten anything graded yet. Right. So. Right. But I thought that's right, man. I'm really glad to hear you had an, an amazing experience. I, I definitely want to hit that show up again. And, and shout out to everyone in the team who put that show together because it sounded like they did an amazing job. So that's great. And it's always super positive over there. Yeah. Like, And I could say that almost about every convention that I've been to is like a super positive experience. Like the people that run it are always passionate. That includes yours, of course. Except for Game like, On, those guys are assholes. Convention. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, ex- except for the main guy. He's always stressed out and running around. I don't... That's me, yeah, uh, right. That <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Cool. But yeah, like, it's just a, it's just super fun going to these conventions. Yeah. And, like, I think going to so many throughout the year, yeah. you know, selling books because I got so much craziness going on, doing panels, like, you almost take for granted right. how unique and awesome they are and how some people that's like the only convention they can go to all year it's like their vacation sure, sure. spot and like well, i just try to have as much fun as possible i'll tell you the convention i go to that I have the least fun at to be honest is game on expo uh i just don't have it's because you gotta I run, go it, run it exactly so i don't have any yeah. time to shop i don't have any time to really do much thing anything fun i've got to put out fires and make sure it goes good so it's really fun to go to these shows that like i like i said before i can appreciate the time and effort and money that goes into these shows. So from that perspective, it makes me appreciate it even more, you know? So, um, but yeah, with game on, it's like so stressful, extremely stressful. So I would say though, that like going and like the times where I'm just at my table right. and don't get to go around and peruse and stuff, I don't have as much fun right. unless there's, the after party and the fun hangout atmosphere. Like at Game On, we always go to Cobra Arcade Ball. Sure, and, sure. And we do the whole hangout in the hotel <laughs> afterward right. with all the people right. there. And like it's it's just a super fun classicness. And but during the convention, you know, um, we're at the table and you're running around and right. everybody's like, go go go. Right. <laughs> I, I like. Like MGC this year, I kind of sold out all my books on Friday, except for a handful. So now I didn't go to the table at all on That's Saturday. Nice. Like people were like trying to find me, like where's Waldo? Like where's where's Hagen at? <laughs> where where did he go? <laughs> like it was hilarious. And like then se- Sunday when they caught me at the table, like oh my god. That's great. Did you bring your card <laughs> yeah. game too to promote? Um. So since Game On, like Game On is where we talked about and conceptualized the card right. game, and then I brought it to Portland. I kind of put that on the back burner since I have like two million books. Yeah, I can right see now, that. Like, yeah, you know, I can in the hopper. I <laughs> like, can see that. I, like as you saw. I can like, understand. Yeah. yeah, cool, cool. Well, awesome, man. Yeah, so it's 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 on a pause, but I also had a couple artists reach out to me that might be interested in like doing instead of being bit battles, like doing artistic recreations. That's so awesome. That way, it's all fair cool. use, which would be very cool, man. Very cool. Real cool. Very cool. Sweet. I, uh, I'm going to do a show coming up here in June. First week of June is called Korgs. It's in Columbus. Korgs? Yeah. Have you been there before? Have you been to that show? 
Um, it's, I have not, but I've been invited, and I haven't. It's made it one out. of my favorite shows. I'll be honest. It's very low key. It's really? uh, it's a one day show. It's from I think ten to ten to four, ten to six on a Saturday. Um, but I went last year for the first time. They invited me back as a guest this year, and I really appreciate it. Um, but guys who run it, Gary and the team who run it, are amazing guys. But very low key. It's it's like uh, you can get some killer deals, and I I sold quite a bit of stuff there. Uh, so yeah, oh, really? it's it's got a lot of might. I'll tell you, and it's growing. Um, so if you're in the Columbus, Ohio area and you're listening to this or watching this, you know, I would encourage you guys to definitely check it out. Corks, it's it's an acronym for something Columbus, Ohio Retro Gamers maybe Society or something like that. Retro gaming show or retro gamer society. I think it's a group. And I, yeah, okay. and I'm pretty sure it's okay. a group. But anyway, it's a great show. And I'll tell you, like the local retro gaming stores in Columbus are actually really cool. Really cool. So um, Yeah, like there's one guy nice. that's been like uh, storing. Is it the Warp Zone games? They've been storing my like having my books. Oh, that's awesome! A while Very cool. Very cool. Darren Griffin, he's out in Columbus. I remember seeing a few for door stops and for toilet paper. Yeah, now they think about. Nah, I'm just playing. Ah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's the only way to use them. Toilet, toilet, toilet paper. I'm just playing. <laughs> no, that's awesome, dude. That's right. So anyway, uh, so except for that, shout out to that show. But I was at PAX for the mm-hmm. first couple days. Uh, PAX East. That's a tiny show. Just a tiny, tiny little show. show called PAX East out in Boston. Uh, <laughs> I was only there for half the time because actually Saturday I flew out uh, to rendezvous. I was meeting my wife in Houston. We went to spend a week in Cancun for our anniversary, 10th anniversary. So shout out to my lovely wife. Uh, wouldn't miss our anniversary for the world. So, But I was the reason I was at PAX was because uh, we were prom- promoting Collector Vision Games, our game, Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mind, that we've talked about before. But... Uh, this is yeah. our first time. The Switch release. The right? Switch. Well, we, Switch. we played on the Switch, you know, and, and if you see pictures, we had like, we, it was kind of cool. My JF, my, my business partner, he had an idea of putting like big Switch controllers on the side of the monitor and cool like giant ass Switches. Oh, that was really, really cool. cool. It was a sweet idea and it looked out really, turned out really awesome. But we had also played on the, the PC. So you could do your, we had four stations um, every, all, all day, like it packed every day. Uh, just yesterday, some uh, the dual screen, Nintendo dual screens podcast. Which is kind of a smaller podcast, still great guys, but they actually shouted our game out as like the best in the show, which is amazing. Uh, really, really humbled nice. to, to see that. That's just really cool. Uh, but I was, we were hanging out, and I was like at my booth, and this guy comes up to me. He's like, "This is a really cool game," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, cool." And he had like a press badge on. I'm like, "Who are you?" And he's like, "Here's my card." And it ended up being like the, the host for IGN. <laughs> I'm like, "What?" Oh, yeah. Nice. So I, I, I gave him like a. We did these press kits, like we did like this, like a um, like an NES cart with a box. As if it were coming out for the game. So I get more of those. And I got his card, obviously. So I'll definitely be following up with him when their game comes out. But that's my biggest fear, man, is oh. so many games come out, you know, and we, we're not we're not getting this, you know, we're not part of a big publisher. This is all self-funded, right? As you know. So our, our marketing budget's yeah. tied. Just like your books, man. I mean, you're doing self-funding, you know, except for Kickstarter. But still, mm-hmm. even that, it's it's all very, you know, low budget, you know, and you're kind of living off of the seat of your pants kind of situation, right? Doing these books. Because you're doing it because you have fun, well, and like- you know? Like with you though, you have a a big team, whereas like with mine, I can kind of yeah. still s- self sufficiently keep it small right. and well, still because I have enough stock to where I can grow. Right. But like a game is a different. It's piece. different, like, yeah. Like you need to get some traction. It certainly need to get yeah, noticed. for sure. So a lot of lot of you know a lot of nerves, a lot of excitement. Obviously, we're going to be uh, probably shooting for a June release this year, um, and so we've been working on it for five years and. You know, each there's like five of us really core people working on this game, but I feel like we all kind of have different expectations for it. You know, like I'm trying to temper my expectations to be honest, because I don't, I don't expect it to go viral or sell millions of copies. I just want it to do well, and I want people to enjoy it. You know, um, yeah, people enjoying it. I think that's going to be a a given because like playing the demo at some of these shows, like those uh, you know viewers that are familiar with Sydney Hunter on the Super Nintendo. Are going to be blown away when they play. It's a the total actual, different, you know, modern yeah. gen version. Total, total different like game. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Ex- ex- excited, man. Um, and so, yeah, PAX was fun. I got, I was like, almost had a heart attack on on Friday night because uh, I got a text from Southwest Airlines saying your flight has been canceled going to Cancun. I'm like, and I was oh, supposed no. to meet with my wife in Houston. My flight to Houston was canceled, and I'm like, oh shit, uh, because my wife would literally kill me. I'd be dead man walking. Um, so I had to, yeah. I had to take the early flight to Baltimore and, and, and anyway, I got there. Okay. But, uh, 
it was like, oh shit, like that's not cool. Um, but you know, we ate at uh, uh, Cheers Bar, which is cool. If you guys have ever seen the show Cheers, it's the original oh, Cheers, nice. which is awesome. Did they know your name? When you uh, they didn't. I was kind of expecting, hey John, what's up? You know, no. Everyone, Everyone knows your knows name, right? Exactly. Name. That's the, that's uh, uh, shout out to uh, Retrotainment, to uh, those guys, Tim and the crew. They were like a couple of booths away from oh, us. Yeah. Uh, they've got, if you guys aren't aware of these guys, <laughs> first off, we, we ate to dinner, we had dinner with them and hung out and partied, but guys are super cool. Nice. Um, they uh, Haunted Halloween 85 and 86 are two. I know you're familiar with these games. They're, they're two homebrew NES games. Oh, absolutely. Really fun platforming, like beat em up games, right? Or I guess it's more of a beat em up. Yeah, Haunted Halloween 86 is on Xbox. That's right. Yeah, right it's on now. Xbox. I know they're working to do yep. a Switch release. It's on Steam as well. Uh, I believe. Uh, anyway, um, really cool to see those guys. They have another game coming out, uh, and I forgot the name of it, but it uses like the two... Uh, full, full, full Quiet. quiet. Yeah, and it's got two NES, two NES controller yeah. kind of candles, but um, really kind of similar to Collector Vision games in the sense that they do like old school, and they also do modern platforms, which is awesome. So we have a lot in common, and we're like telling war stories of our experiences working on games, and you know, <laughs> so really cool to talk to them, and they're super supportive of the community, as we are, and uh, I'm going to and I, and I actually saw them last weekend at uh, Middle Oh, yeah, Game that's right. They were there, too. Oh. Yeah, that's right. So, anyway, that's kind of like what I've been up to. And, you know, awesome that you had a good time at uh, the Midwest Gaming Classic and all that good stuff. But uh, anything else you want to add, man? So, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I also went uh, for the first time to... I went to the Retro Palooza. Oh, how was that, man? And... Yeah, and it was like a couple-hour drive okay. for me. It was up in Dallas-Fort Worth. And I'm in the middle of nowhere can't drink the water taxes right now. <laughs> um, like, it's, it's in the so middle of nowhere. But, like, I went up there, you know, it's ran by uh, Jay from the yeah, Game Chasers. shout out to Jay. Um, okay, by the way, before we continue, I just want to shout, shout out to those guys mm-hmm. for their successful Kickstarter campaign for the movie. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. Awesome, excited for those guys. I know they're going to put together a killer movie, and um, I'm excited for them. And, and you know, me being a retrofile, um, I had to get the VHS copy. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I did. That, that's I pretty sure awesome. Did, right? <laughs> so cool. So yeah, I bet I, I did that within seventy two. But um, so the the swap meet idea is super interesting. It was wasn't Retro Palooza because Retro Palooza that they do in Houston is is like right. massive. This was like more of a honed in swap seller yeah. one day event, kind of right. like Korg's. Um, and it was just super fun, like just seeing all the local people to the Dallas area. Afterward, they all did a big old like you know, like cool. dinner cool. and stuff, and it was it was super super chill. Um, you know, I every time I go to a new convention, I meet new people, and I met some people that I've known for a while awesome. too. And awesome. it's just it's a super good time, and you know, there was no frills, there was no panels or yeah, you know, sure, no that's, that's cool. Anything kind of low you key, know, just go yeah. and hang out and enjoy. That's like Korg's kind of felt like that, but. Uh... Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, but it's it's uh, the show's growing. I'm telling you, and it's it's a it's a blast. So uh, it sounds like that show's great too, and cool, cool. I've been to Absolutely. two retro Paloozas. I've been to the one in Houston, and I've been to one in Dallas once. Uh, I had a great time at both times for sure. So yeah, and um, you know, if if people want us to uh, talk about a follow up uh, to our e begging episode, I was there right after we posted okay. that episode. And there was a lot of craziness in our comments below on that e-bagging episode. And there was some uh, stuff that we talked about that I could go into depth if the viewers wanted, of course. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it in this episode or do you want to save it for another episode? It's up to you. I think we could save it. If people want it, if people want to hear us talk about it, and they, you know, they get to the, the end of this episode and they actually actually listen to it, because I heard some of, the, some of the critics didn't even like, watch tell. our yeah, episode. Yeah, you can't tell. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but on on that that being said, there was a lot of misconceptions out there. Okay. Um, just stuff that's going on that people are making assumptions yeah. of, and it's like spreading around like wildfire. That's a good cliffhanger to end this episode. Yeah. Can, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, where can people find you? Hagensalley.com is where you can find me. Uh, anywhere on social media. Hagen's Alley, and um, my couple of my newer books are definitely up for pre-order in the bookstore there, um, and eventually they go on to other stuff like Amazon and things. But getting 
on HagensAlley.com is the key way to get all the items, especially cool. the limited ones, because I don't do anything in giant cool. print runs. So that's the I meant, go. where can people find you as far as your home address and your your, your daughter's school, uh, you know, where your wife works? I mean, y'all can come, <laughs> come and help me down. You, know? you won't find me. I like that. Texas, <laughs> the saying. pause, like, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just play. <laughs> All right, you should see my eyes, right. John. Jeff, always good chat with you, brother. Uh, I'll put a link to your, your channel below and your site below, of course, so people can find you. But uh, appreciate your time. Thanks, man. Cheers. Bye. Yeah, I'll do what my daughter does. Yeah, party, party on. on. Game on. Bye. <laughs>